Well, what we see here is a bedrock geology map for the state of Indiana, and these different colors actually indicate the time period in which in, in, in which those rocks were deposited. The pink represents the Ordovician time period of the Paleozoic era, and and of course you can see as we change the different colors, what we're doing is moving into younger and younger rocks, and so. As you move from the southeast to the southwest, the rocks here in Indiana are becoming younger and younger in age as you move to the southwest. They're also becoming younger in age as you move to the north or northeast. So when were these rocks deposited and, and what does that tell us about their environment? Well, we all <clears throat> what we're seeing is a stratigraphic column for the various uh, rock units here in Indiana. And the thing I'd like to point out here is if, if we look at the basement rock, which is uh, Precambrian age rock, once we move into the Cambrian period, you're basically seeing a cycle or um, uh, uh, different deposits of sandstone in yellow, as well as carbonates, which includes limestone and dolomites in blue. And then you'll also see these gray deposits. Where these are actually shell deposits. And so if, if we look at these Paleozoic bedrock formations, uh, what you're going to see is that you'll see this alternation between yellow, blue, gray, and then back to blue. What this is a reflection of is one of two things, both the uh, sea level during the Paleozoic and changes of that, as well as also sediment input from areas like Canada or the Appalachian Mountain region. Carbonates form in, in, in warm, shallow seaways um, and very clear water. Um, Indiana during the Paleozoic was much closer to the equator uh, than what it is now. And it also spent the majority of that uh, Paleozoic era submerged. And so um, what we get are these thick packages of carbonates but then when sediment starts being eroded either from Canada or from the Appalachian Mountain regions, uh, the carbonate factory will turn off. And, and, and then as the water becomes clearer again and conditions become right for carbonate formation, uh, we start getting carbonates being produced again. And so these events uh, uh, are varying throughout the Paleozoic. Once we get into the Silurian period and Devonian, you see this very thick deposit of, of carbonate rocks, and then we have a very long time of shell, uh, uh, shell being uh, ethified. When we move into the Mississippian time period, right about here is where we start getting the famous Salem limestone. And, and so why are these alternations occurring? Well, one of the reasons is global sea level. If you look in the, during the carbonate, I mean, during the Cambrian period, sea levels were the second highest in earth history and so at that point in time Indiana is submerged and if at any time the, the, the conditions become right for carbonate production then we're going to get limestones or dolomites being produced um, in time periods in which the sediment would would come in from Canada or the Appalachian Mountain region that's going to shut down the carbonate factory and we'll get shells and limestones but as we get later into the Paleozoic era through the Ordovician, Silurian, and Devonian period, one of the things that you're going to notice is that sea level is going to start to decrease. In other words, this line is getting closer to modern day sea level. And then right at the later point of the Mississippi, you see a very uh, significant drop off in sea level. This is when Indiana is emerging from that Paleozoic ocean. Um, so much so that it, when Indiana emerges, um, it becomes more of an erosional environment. And so any sediment that was deposited um, or eroded from Indiana is no longer here. So we do not have the rocks to be able to interpret the geologic history of our state uh, during the late Paleozoic and throughout the Mesozoic era. It's not until we move into the Cenozoic era that we start getting uh, glaciers moving in from Canada due to a much cooler climate that, that we start getting sediments deposited again. 
and that's the basis for our sand and gravel operations that we have now a very flat topography until you get down to south central Indiana where the glaciers did not progress any further. Uh, the glaciers did loop around to the west and to the east and so they went a little bit further uh, for further uh, south in those regions. This is the mineral calcite. Now of course this is a very large piece. This is the mineral that actually makes up limestone. And of course this is a, a very nice piece of uh, Salem limestone which is of great e economic value to the state um, as well as uh, uh, it's a very famous uh, a building facing material around the world. And one of the ways that you identify a carbonate is that carbonate will react with hydrochloric acid and so you very simply put a drop of hydrochloric acid on there if it fizzes like it does here or effervesces is the proper word then it's uh, then it's calcium carbonate the same thing would happen here if I just put it on the on the mineral itself okay. now this limestone is actually a Mississippian age limestone and people think that Indiana limestone includes all limestone here in Indiana. But here's another example. This is the Ordovician age limestone. And of course you would not use this for facing buildings. Um, you know, the quality and characteristics of that do not permit that. But you'll see that it has the same reaction with, with hydrochloric acid as the Salem limestone.